are listening to the Moto Moto Live Show, hosted by my dad, Jack Brassfield. Somebody ask you, did you drive that big Tonka truck here or what? So it's the fourth lap. Hey, You've been in the lead the entire race, race, and you tangle up with some banners. Are you kidding me? I'm telling you, this is the next wave. Don't tell me about struggle. When I started racing, I was going to the track in a four-door car. My bike was in the truck. Okay, it's time to get serious. The windows are down. You're driving down the back road. Are you listening to country or rock and roll? Tell me seriously, where do you see yourself in five years? You are now listening to the Moto Moto Live Show, hosted by my dad, Jack Brassfield. Okay, it's the last lap. Your teammate is right in front of you, and it's the last corner. What's your next move? Supercross, motocross, arena cross, I don't care. These guys are the gnarliest men on the planet. And let's not forget about the women in this sport. Kawasaki, Suzuki, Yamaha, Honda, KTM, Gas Gas, Husky. What's next, guys? Blue Taco? Last week, you made it to the podium. Who helped you get there? Now, let's talk about the lappers. Now, I don't know about you. I've got a different view on this. If I'm in eighth place, and I get the blue flag, I'm like, are you kidding me? I'm racing for eighth place. You are now listening to the Moto Moto Live Show, hosted by my dad, Jack Brassfield. Yeah, I love it. No, 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 I disagree totally. The last chance qualifier is my favorite race of the night. When else are you going to have everybody laying it all on the line just to get into the main event? So what's your training look like these days? Is that milkshake part of it, huh? Who's your first phone call after oh, the race? Good. Favorite set of gear, go. Who do you follow on social media? They say everybody puts their okay, pants okay. on the same way. Baloney, is it left leg first or right You know, I don't care what they say. We were friends before. Before this race, but I'm yeah, not going that's to dinner ball, yeah. after this is over. Okay, you're on the <laughs> podium. Your mechanic hands you the hat to do the <laughs> interview. Right. Is it ears tucked in or regular status? Chocolate or vanilla? Sit back, relax. Here comes Jack Brassfield with the Moto Moto Live Show. All right, awesome, awesome. Thank you guys for showing up. This is the Moto Moto Live Show. This is episode 11. We are live tonight at the historic Mayo Hotel in downtown Tulsa. What a beautiful place this is. Thank you so much, John Snyder, for hosting our show. And before I get ahead of myself, uh, this is our new home for the Moto Moto Live Show anytime we're local like this. So thank you so much, John, for doing that. My co-host tonight is always... Jackson Brassfield, the 2021 Hoosier Arena Cross National Champion in the Super Mini class. Tonight we have two amazing gentlemen. One has been there, done that, got the t-shirt, drafted into the major leagues in 1991, ninth round pick. That's amazing. <laughs> I want to just read that over and over again. Went on to play for five major league teams, Detroit Tigers, Pittsburgh Pirates, Arizona Diamondbacks, St. Louis Cardinals, Miami Marlins. The other gentleman we have on stage tonight is our privateer profile. He's been a part of the Dirty 100. He's won Loretta Lynn's titles. He's raced in the prestigious Monster Cup. You wouldn't even know he was here in the room tonight if I wasn't talking to him because he's Mr. Quiet. I'm going to call him the silent assassin. Please welcome to the stage, guys. Give him a big round of applause. Clint Sadowski and Caden Amarine. All right, we're going to start with uh, Clint tonight. This uh, first segment is called Icebreakers. It's uh, designed to get to know our guest because these guys put on their jeans the same way you do, I, I think. Maybe left leg, right leg first, whatever. But uh, this is the icebreaker segment brought to you by Roost MX. If you guys will turn behind you and grab those Roost shirts. Roost MX. 
the way to go if you want to look good at the racetrack. I'm talking about bike graphics. These are pit shirts. Uh, if you, uh, every Cobra you buy today comes with Roost graphics on it. Uh, the, the, the thing I love about Christina Denny over there at Roost is if once you're in the system, I can call her tomorrow and say, I need graphics. They go out the door in 48 hours. Amazing company. I know, I know you guys know who they are. Uh, awesome. Thank you, Christina Denny. You guys can put those back behind there. And uh, they also sponsor Jackson. Uh, we're about to start the Arena Cross Tour again. And uh, we're going to go down that road of traveling. <laughs> you ready? Yeah, sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're going to get right into this, uh, these uh, icebreakers. Uh, these, these, like I said, these questions are designed to get to know Clint. So uh, how are you doing? Doing great. Glad to be here. Thank you. Thank you for coming out. Uh, what'd you drive? A big dually truck trying to park it downtown. So if you're wondering what a major league pitcher drives, I've seen it. It's a badass big old black dually. It is awesome. So, okay, so we're going to break the ice here. I'm, I'm going to get you talking here because you're going to just go sit there and make me pull it out of you. Yeah. Uh, when you're going down the road, is it windows down or, or is it diva status with the AC on? Uh, most of the time, windows down. Dude, I, uh, that's one of our first. <laughs> well, my daily driver doesn't have air conditioning. Okay. It's okay. a 72 Monte Carlo that I got when I was 15. I still have it. And uh, I just never have fixed air conditioner. In it. Wow. Okay. All right. He's a badass. I told you he was. <laughs> uh, you, don't, you don't get to, the, uh, to play for five major league teams and, and drive with the AC on all day. <laughs> so, okay, next question uh, in the icebreaker segment. You're driving down the road. Is it, is it take the main road, hurry up and get home, or is it back roads? Preferably back roads. Okay. Uh, you know, coming back from the Loretta's last week, we didn't have much choice. It was I-40 with semis every 20 feet. Oh, so you got off I-40? I no. might need you to speak a little bit. Yeah, I said I was on I-40 that we had to take the main roads, but yes, I'd rather take the back roads and, and take my time. I'm getting gotcha. to that age now where I'm not in a hurry. And is it country or rock and roll? Classic rock, some old school country, both. You guys, okay, we, we're going to bring these softball girls up here. These are World Series champions, okay? Cool. Be taking notes, okay? This guy played for... Uh, five major league baseball teams okay and we're gonna get into that so start taking notes uh, so summer or winter oh summer by by far really oh yeah there's no sense having cold weather <laughs> I actually figured you would say the opposite because you play you would play all summer well and you're I, done yeah but I mean I got so adapted to you know the heat that I just don't do well with the cold okay oh well yeah yeah you know what uh, elbows, knees. Oh yeah, you hurt. I, I see it oh, now. Yeah. yeah, I hate the winter too. I'm with yeah, you. Yeah. I'm with you. Okay, this one could get you in trouble. So think about this. I don't want to get you in trouble. Who's your best friend? Who's my best friend? Yeah. Now hang on. I know what I would say. Well, yeah, we're gonna say the wife. Okay, but, okay. But you meant like racing friend? No, no, that's what I meant. Okay. Yes. <laughs> It'd be the wife. No, Tana is my best friend. Where's yeah. she at? There she is. Now, uh, I just didn't want you to get in trouble going home. Yeah. All right, so hey, we broke the ice with Clint Sodowski. Um, awesome, good to get to know you. You know what, I, actually, let me, let me start with that because both of these guys, I don't, like I've met these guys twice. Now, Caden, and we'll get into him later, um, he's our privateer profile tonight. And uh, now I've watched him grow up on dirt bikes but hadn't spoke five words to him, okay? And Clint Sadowski, I mean, I've only seen him at the racetrack two times, so we're getting to know these guys together right now. So, um, okay, segment two, here we go. Uh, this segment is called Strikeout, and it's sponsored by Beehive Blends. We gotta plug the sponsors, guys. Pick up that Beehive Blends right in front of you. You guys get to go home with this. This is from my buddy, Chris Miles, and uh, We'll also talk about this later, too, but you've had two Tommy John surgeries, right? Yes. So I actually use this on my elbows, and it does work. I wouldn't be advertising. I had Chris send Jackson and I some, and uh, Jackson, jump in there. I saw you rubbing that on your knees today. Uh, it's, does it, it work, or it does it work? Really good. Yeah. It works. After the gym, some soreness, and it gets it, rid of it. You went to the gym at 11? 11, 11.30. 
and he was in here helping me set up, rubbing that crap all over, not crap, he was rubbing that beehive blends <laughs> all over his knees. And it works, guys, okay? I'm not joking. Uh, uh, check it out. Uh, let me, let me, I can't forget this. Let me get this close. They're, they're doing a 30% off if you use promo code Moto Moto Live 2021. Let me show that. 30 seconds. I didn't know it was 30% off. Yeah, it's 30% I'm have off. To order Guys, some. check this stuff out. 30% off if only if you use Moto Moto Live 2021 discount code. They're good people and it works. So, uh, all right, that's, uh, that's our sponsor for this segment. I'm going to jump right into it. You, uh, I saw two videos today. One of you striking out Barry Bonds, and the other one was Mark McGuire. I'm, <laughs> I'm blown away, okay, because here's why I'm blown away. You strike him out and then just walk off the field like it's like, yeah, no big deal. <laughs> I showed you. I showed hard. you. He's like, ah, no big deal. How, what the heck? How does that feel? It's a job. I mean, you know, you, you try to do your job, do it the best you can, you know. Of course, you know, there's probably more emotion going on inside than, you know, being shown on the outside, you know. Yeah. I probably, I know, like with Barry, I mean, I probably didn't sink in until I got back to the dugout, but Good. I got us out of the inning. That's what I was supposed to do. <laughs> That's amazing. Well, yeah, I guess so you closed it out with him yeah. because you walked off the field twice yeah. or in both those videos. That's amazing. So, I mean, are you scratching your head going, dang, I can't believe that? Or, yeah, hell yeah, I just struck you out. I mean, what's the, the emotion going on? Well, like I said, you know, inside you're just pretty calm and, or not calm and collect, but on the outside you look at, you know, you know, yeah, it'd be fun to just run off the field, but some guys do, you know, that's their demeanor. They, they run off the field, but. So on the outside, you're just, trying to show them, yeah, no big deal. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I got you. No different so, being the starting gate, right? Everybody looks calm and collect for the most part, but everybody's losing that. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, because and we're gonna get into that too, because this guy's not only a major league baseball pitcher, uh, he's he's also a motocross champion. But we're gonna talk baseball right this minute. Uh, so you said it's a job, you know? I mean, when did it become a job? Because you started playing baseball at what age? Well. I started out, I played the Little League stuff. Uh, I grew up in a small town to start with, with only about 500 people. And so we basically just did like co-ed, uh, I think to maybe like the fourth grade or something like that. We moved to Palm City when I was in sixth grade, so of course we were in a bigger city. Uh, I guess I really didn't start taking it legitimately serious until probably my junior year of high school. Really? Yeah, yeah, I mean, I, I, I didn't get to play a lot. I mean, I got to pitch some because I had a good arm, but I didn't get to play the field much. I uh, didn't get to hit. Uh, was it always it, the pitcher role? It was at, you know, 12, 13, 14 years of age. You know, you got to play some right field or outfield, you know, later innings and yeah. stuff like that. But yeah, there, there normally wasn't a starting position just sitting there waiting to, you know, shortstop, whatever it be. Yeah, yeah. We were friends before this race, but I'm not going to do that's our <laughs> opening monologue show there. There's shut we that just started off. over. Sorry about <laughs> that. You guys, can you guys hear? Hear the? Okay, you can hear Clint. Because both of these guys, and I'm, I'm going to tell you my theory on this. They're both so damn quiet. <laughs> I put my hearing aid on. You know why? Because it's just like they're so. I don't. In my opinion, I, I'm meeting these guys too. But uh, it's like they're so humble, and they're like, ah, it's no big deal. And they're just like barely telling you. <laughs> I'm like, dude, I would be jumping up and down. I mean, I would be screaming it. You know I would be. Yeah. I'm just, I don't know if I'm braggadocious or what, but I'm like <laughs> proud of my accomplishments. I'm like, hell uh, you, yeah, did you, you see jack? that? Rewind no. it. I don't know what the deal is. You're just jack. I'm just jack, man. That's yeah. just what I do. So, okay, so... Uh, you were drafted in 1991. Hang on, let me back up. You were, you were, you were at ninth grade. Where'd you, go, where'd you go to college? I went one year to Connor State Junior College, which is here in Oklahoma. Are you serious? Yeah, I did, I did end up going. There was some drafting and follow stuff out of high school. 
but uh, ended up going to Connors because if you go to a Division One college, you have to be 21 or a junior to get drafted. And I didn't figure that was probably my route that I wanted to go. But if you go to junior college, you can get drafted any time. I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. So I did a year of junior college and then got drafted. Uh, I'm not a I'm not a huge baseball follower. I love ba- I I mean I thought I I could do it at one time, you know, because I'm delusional. But um, uh, I thought they could get drafted right out of high school. Oh, you can. Okay, you can. You you can. But I wasn't ready. I mean, I was not. Ex- Oops. Okay. I wasn't ex- experienced enough. Probably I needed I needed some more time. Just like when I did get drafted. Uh, they sent me to rookie ball for two years, too. I basically had the same numbers, had like a mid-3 ERA, but I was just still so wet behind the ears. And basically went from, you know, out of high school to, you know, five years later you're in the big leagues. It was just a huge jump. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> so. and, and, and you guys, we're going to talk to Caden here in a minute about that because, I mean, it goes from zero to 60 in a heartbeat. Yeah, it definitely does. That's amazing. Join in. Jump in anytime, okay? You're yeah. part of the whole show. Yeah. You're not just the privateer profile. We're just going to highlight you that at that point. Um, Don't be nervous. We were training partners at one time. Yeah. Right? There you yeah, go. There that. you go. <laughs> These guys have ridden dirt bikes together. Okay, so uh, you get drafted in, from Connors yes. in 1991. Where were you at when, when they – how did they let you know? Were you on the couch? Were you at the mall? Where were you at? I was fishing. And I don't fish much, but I remember this. I was out fishing. I was back home. Uh, and I came back to the house, and my mom had told me that Stan Meeks called. Uh, Stan Meeks at the time was OU's head coach, and it was also a Detroit Tigers scout. Oh, my God. And Stan calls me and said, we took you in the ninth round. And, you know, I'm like, whoa, because, I, you know, I figured maybe 30, 40th round or something like that. I would be home on the couch watching round one, two, three, four through, I mean – you were in the ninth I, I, round. I don't know, though. I don't know then if we even had. I don't think the draft was even on TV. That's what I'm saying. And, you know, that was what yeah. 30 years ago, 32 years ago. Yeah. So there was, there wasn't that notoriety of it then. You just kind of waited, probably got the phone call. Really? Yeah. And which would have been at home because there were no cell phones. No. Boys no. Phone. <laughs> have no idea what we used to go through. Yeah. They probably called him. They probably called Quick Trip, which wasn't Quick Trip back then. Said. Have you seen him put him on the payphone? I mean, yeah. dude. So they called your mom. Yeah, and and uh, of course I accepted the offer, and uh, he came probably I don't know a week later, and uh, we signed the contract, and it was off to rookie ball. And how old were you when you I got drafted? Nineteen. 19. 19 I just turned years nineteen. Old. Yeah, I, I just turned. No, I had I was still eighteen. I was going to turn nineteen because I was you know, July birthday. This is this is unreal. Wow, eighteen years old, you get called by the Detroit Tigers. That's amazing. So you go. I mean, do you pack up and you move? I mean, you're well, you're living with mom one day and and you're in Detroit the next. Yeah. Well, actually, I got on a plane and they flew me to Bristol, Tennessee, and that's where the rookie team was at. It's okay. a short season A ball. You don't play a full season, and I went and played about sixty games there until. I guess probably the end of August, 1st, September. And then uh, you get about a month off, and then you're back to Florida for what they call instructional league for all the younger players, and you basically just play every day. (laughs) This sounds so awesome to me. And I'll tell you how delusional I am. I mean, I tell you about, I I, I would think I I could play, right? You know, I was riding dirt bikes and all this. A buddy of mine calls me. He's a great pitcher, local. We're like, I'm talking little league, junior high. And, you, and, and then you hear about some open tryout at, at the drillers, and he calls me one day, let's go try out. I, I'm so delusional or confident. I don't know what, what do you call it because I don't even know what, what position I would try out for, but I'm like, he talks me into it. I didn't go, but I'm saying oh, in my gone. mind, I'm, I'm like, yeah, hell yeah, we'll try out for the drillers. Well, you talk yeah. about a tryout for the drillers. My dad took me like 34 years ago. The drillers had a tryout. Yeah. Well, yeah, it was, I think it was for all Major League Baseball. And at that time, I think it was just after my junior year, we drove over, and I think they had 140 pitchers that day or something. I was like 138. And so, you know, you would throw 15, 20 pitches, and they have the gun on you, and they, they scout you, and that's how you got looked at, you know. 
Wow. Yeah. So. That's so yeah. awesome. <laughs> and what happened with that? Well, that's probably helped with getting drafted and stuff because, you know, they, they follow around and it's totally different nowadays. I mean, they've got all these acronyms of things that go on. I have no idea what velocity speed off the bat and, yeah. you know, back then it was just who could get somebody out. I mean, that was your statistic. Yeah, yeah. You know, keep, the pitcher keeps them from scoring and the guy hits it out of the park. I yeah. mean, those were the two things that they looked at. Wow. So. <laughs> that's awesome. Okay, superstitions. Uh, next question. I know when uh, you know you, you watch guys go up to bat, uh, they've got to strap their right glove five times, <laughs> you know, and then the left one three. Superstitions. Uh, I guess probably I always had to I always had to lick my hand, see Mike, or go to my hat. My hat probably was always you know, I had to touch the bill of the hat. That was just you know something I had to do. Nowadays they'd call it cheating. You know. Really? Oh, yeah. Because you've got some well, grease on there. I, mean, I saw the other day in a highlight on Sports Center or something. I mean, they got guys basically pulling down their pants. They've got sandpaper or pine tar under their belt loops and everything else, you know. But You're kidding me. No, it's. That's uh, crazy. Yeah, yeah, it's. Uh, but anyway, I would probably have to say that I always felt like I had to touch my hat. And, okay. And. You know, I just, so let's watch some old videos when he get home. Let's see. Yeah, <laughs> let's see if Clint touches his hat. That's that's cool. You, the the two videos that, that you sent me, I didn't even notice that, but I'll bet you did. Yeah. I just and noticed it, how calm you were and how it was no big deal. I mean, matter of fact, the announcer was going on about how awesome Barry Bonds was, and you're standing there and you just struck him out. And I mean. I don't know. I just that's what I focused well, in on. And that's the thing about the sport, though. It's just like motocross. You can have one great race a year, and you live off that one great race, yeah. right? And then you got the guy that top fives every moto of the year. Yeah, that's that. Definitely... Barry Bonds did it for twenty years. Yeah. You know, I did it for three or four years. That's the difference in, you know. So standing up there on that mound, and this will this will end out this strikeout session. Uh, you're up on the mound. How many times have have you? hit somebody or not hit them but they rushed the mound how many times have have they rushed the mound and wanted to kill you uh, <laughs> my league's quite a not quite a bit on the rushing but i hit a lot of batters because my ball moved a lot okay i had a lot of sync to the ball the ball moved a lot especially right hand hitters i try to come in on them you know i i would probably say i know of three or four good scraps in the minor leagues. Nothing really? I don't really in the big leagues too much. You know, there's a few altercations, but. And yeah. so in my, in my mind, I'm thinking you're watching him run towards you. Mm -hmm. I, mean, <laughs> I mean, what are you doing? Well, he's going to probably meet me about 30 feet, both of us, you know, if it's 60 feet, six inches to the plate. Uh, I guess probably de depends on who it is too. Okay. You, know, you, you, you pick your battles. Oh, you pick yeah, your you battles. Pick how fast is your catcher? You hope he's fast. To pull him back. Yeah. <laughs> or, you know, or, or be there, but, uh, okay. Yeah, so it, I'm it, just going to come out and ask it. Everybody's asking, did you ever get your ass kicked on the mound then? I never really, I know the last time that it happened, there was a picture the next day in the newspaper of the brawl at home plate, basically. I'm going to say he won. <laughs> yeah. I was like 34, 35. I'm back in the minor leagues. You know, everybody else is 15 years younger than me. And I'm like on the bottom of the pile. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I knew it was time to retire. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that was the night? Yeah. That was, was that the night? Well, I was close. Probably a month later, I think I was, I was done. But, yeah. Oh, my God. You know, yeah, I hate to say it. bigger and stronger, and I played in an era where there were guys that, you know, I look up in their, their forearms, look like garden hoses, the, the veins on them. You know, yeah. You yeah. Know, like, yeah. <laughs> I you know, I, I hate to say, you know, I'm, I'm, I, I don't like those guys that watch motocross, arena cross, and say arena crash, and I, I don't like that. I don't, but I, I mean, I gotta admit, <laughs> I'm sitting here going, I want to see the fight. I want to see the <laughs> the guy rush the mound. I want to see Clint punch him. You know, so I mean, I get it. I yeah. get it. Yeah. But uh, so that was what was that the that moment you're telling us about? Yeah, that was that was. I think Where were you at? Uh, El Paso. Yeah. Who were, you, who were you playing? I don't remember. Whoever they were, I don't remember. Because we you guys played like yeah. 160 games a year, Yeah, right? and I had been with 
two or three teams that year, and it was just a long, long year. So I know Jackson and I hit the entire Arena Cross Series for two years. He got second one year. He won the title the next year. There were points where, I mean, uh, we would be like, man, I, I don't even remember what that – you don't remember the town. You don't remember what hotel you were in. I mean, you hit so many. You guys are playing 160? Basically, it's 162 or 160 games in like 182 days. It's a regular major oh league season, you know, just for that. And then someone asks you, do you remember Dallas, St. Louis, whatever, Cleveland? And you're like, dude, I don't remember. I mean, yeah. is that how it is? Yeah, it is to a certain degree, you know. You know, it's, it's, you'll be driving along, and all of a sudden you'll get a flashback, you know, because we're getting old. We get these flashbacks and yeah. stuff, you know, especially when you're You need some classic. CBD cream. Man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, like when you listen to classic rock, it puts you back to where you're at, right? Yeah, yeah, there you go. But, uh, yeah, I, there's, you know, you get a flashback. Oh, yeah, I remember that place. And then you try to think of the player's name. And that's what's been great about, like, say, Facebook is you can remember a, a player that you had forgot and put yeah. their name in and find them. And, yeah. You know, see and either say sorry or, <laughs> or how's it going? Yeah. yeah, you two better jump in. All right? I want you to yeah. jump in and interact with Clint here, man. Did, so you turn fifty this year? I will next year. Next year, okay. And uh, so we're going to jump right into segment three, which is uh, two wheels, sponsored by Bub's Creek, which is our racetrack, guys. I want to give you an update on Bub's Creek Motocross. Uh, we got hit with a flood in Bristow, Oklahoma. Uh, God, I don't know, a couple months ago. Like a and, huge um, flood. <laughs> huge flood. It wiped out the blacktop road on the way to the track. So regardless of what it did to the track, it wiped out the blacktop road. You couldn't even get to the track. And it wiped out the bridge at the track. Um, so we are under construction right now. So we're sponsoring this segment. And uh, this is uh, segment three, two wheels. When did you start riding? We're going to get into the moto side. 1979, DS80. DS80. Yeah, uh, 78? Was it 80? Okay, it was an 80. Yeah. 1980? He brought it to me, yes. Is DS the, the DS was the red. Yeah, it was oil injected. Okay. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, it's one that had the, the, that Suzuki was orange, you know, and it had the little headlight and the tail. It's more of a trail bike. Okay, was, I don't yeah. remember yeah. that. I never heard of I the DS. I didn't start until 87, yeah. so. A little okay. before your time. And these guys like the were. Like <laughs> Or hadn't yeah. even been thought of. Yeah, yet. there was the DRs, I think, now or whatever, but it was a DS then. Yeah. Okay. How old were you? Okay. Uh, seven, I guess, seven or eight. Seven oh, years old. Yeah, so, eight, you're, I guess, yeah. so you're riding, playing baseball. Is there a point where you're like, Dad, I want to race? Or when did racing start? Racing really started. Well, so I didn't really, I raced at DS one time at Ponca because I had some race there. And they put me in the 60 class. They were mm -hmm. 60 and 80s, remember, not 65, 85. Mm -hmm. And we took the headlight off, took a paper plate, and those two brackets that held the, the headlight on, we put the paper plate over that, took electrical tape and did 111, and then just did 111 on the side plates. And that was the one just race. Just because it was the, electri it it was, the easiest number to put. Well, that's, <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. And okay. So, okay, your dad's that. out in the audience. You remember this? <laughs> yeah. He says, yeah, okay. Yeah, it was All that right. one race. And then... I, I guess I was probably in, so then I got an 86 RM80, which is basically still the same bike today. It's the yeah. same. <laughs> same, 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 same. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Some, you know it is. It's the same so plastics. The Cowie, the Cowie is <laughs> yeah. like the 1990. At least the Cowie, Cowie. looks a little yeah. bit so yeah, they got newer. Some better plastics. It's, yeah. Yeah. it's really sad. And you know yeah. what? Here, here's the thing. Let me jump off on this real quick. Christian Janik at Loretta Lens won on that 1990 KX80. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Come on, think about it. He's on a 2021. The KX is a little bit better than the It's not Suzuki. much better. It just has different plastic. I mean, and and so if if you're, uh, I'm sorry, Brian Began, <laughs> but if you're Hayden and Brian, you're going, damn, Annie beat me on a yeah. 1990. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, he's showcasing the method race wheels, and he's got the fastest KT. He's got the fastest 85 on the track, or 105, 112, whatever they're running. And here he gets beat. Come on, you guys yeah, know it. KTMs are good. Yeah. I know uh, he's probably afraid to say something. He doesn't no. want to risk future sponsorship. But it's a 1990 <laughs> KX80, guys. Come on. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, they so keep you were riding the 86. Plastics. What's that? Yeah, they keep upgrading the plastics. That's all that's they do. The, yeah, that's, that's all, all they do. do. That's all they do. Can you imagine being an engineer for that group? <laughs> That'd be yeah, easy. I'll bet you that motor would <laughs> yeah. stick right in the frame of the 1990. Yeah, I guarantee it. 
So Suzuki and Kawasaki, get your act together. KTM and Husky is running away. Yeah. yeah. I'm sorry. Okay, so it's 1986. You're riding an RM80. We got the RM80, so, of course, being from Tonka, then you've got the NMA Grand National. Then all you have to do is basically pay to go to your qualifier, pay your money, and mm -hmm. you get to go. I tried my hand at that, and uh, then also in 87, I went to the RM125. Okay. Yeah, that's the one that had the first year power stroke valve in it. It would come loose and, and, and touch the piston. Were you doing Ponca and stuff like yeah, that? Yeah, I did. I did those two then. But so just we probably it. passed each other in the pit area because yeah. I started in 87. Okay. Yeah. And Ponca was the biggest thing going. Mm -hmm. It was just as big. And I know you boys you probably, you know, you hadn't seen that. But Ponca used to be, Ricky Walker, you know this, used to be as big <laughs> as Loretta's. I mean, yeah, your parents would take off for That's two weeks. Heard, yeah. One week for Ponca, one week for Loretta Lenz. Well, and it's back when everybody, you see, though, you know, back west, though, in California and everything, everybody would come out. And if you had a box van, you were somebody. Oh, my God. You know? Yeah, you, I mean, were, you were if, if you had a, and, and rich. One guy show up, Sean Kalos, and his grandfather converted a uh, Greyhound into, a, like, a toter. I saw it. Yeah. yeah. And that was, like, the big thing. But Honda you 80s, could get, like, maybe. 50 riders in like a hundred square foot area back in the day because everybody was in a tent or a box van. And do you remember, I know you do, uh, uh, there used to be a road course in the beginning. I helped first, put the fence around that. When uh, you yeah. would pull into Ponca City where they do the pitback races, yeah. Yeah. There's a little, there was a road course. Yeah, there's still it's, a, it's, well, it's, well, I don't, the I slab, think the slab, actually, it was no, there. Blacktop for, yeah. and Jeff yeah. Ward that was would there come for, out and they, like, made, last they year. made miniature uh, crotch rockets. I actually had one one time <laughs> because I was full. But you, they had miniature crotch rockets. I'm talking like YZ80 crotch rocket. I'm not joking. Not uh -huh. the pocket, not the not the pocket bikes that are oh, only no. two feet. These things were this tall. Yeah. Um, and I mean, it was like a real crotch rocket. And Jeff Ward came out one day. You know who he yeah, is. Yeah, but that right? was that little. Wasn't that there? And then yeah, did they take the, it out? Or the slab's still, still there. there. Yeah, the yeah that's still what there I thought. Because, okay. The road course or yeah. the slab? The, no. the, the slab for the road course. Okay. Yeah, the road yeah, course it was still, still there. there. Because okay. It's still there, but because I helped build the fence around it to get free entry fees. How old were you? 13. <laughs> yeah, 14. they're building fence. <laughs> well, help him, you know, yeah, help yeah. build a fence. And Ron Hendrickson that ran the NMA, he would pay for entry fee. So we did everything, though. You know, okay. That's back when you had tires everywhere. You had the flags everywhere. Yeah, yeah. And hay bales. And, I remember. Yeah. Man, and that's, that's all you did. The, I'm sorry. You boys missed that. That was the heyday, I'm telling you. Honda got mad one year. I think 88, 89. Honda was so mad that, you know, because it cost so much to go to these. Mm -hmm. They were mad, and they parked outside the gate. Do you remember that? Yeah, you told yeah. me about yeah, they Honda parked, parked outside, outside the gate. They said, <laughs> fine. And it was probably, it probably came down to some $100, yeah. you know, extra fee or something. They're like, we've already paid thousands of dollars to be here. Outside you know, it gate. was probably over something like that. Because why would you park too. outside the gate and still send your riders into race? It was probably <laughs> like sucks. a precedent. They're yeah. like, we're not paying another cent. Yeah. And they used to have uh, huge circus tents that would have games in it. You'd have Damon Bradshaw and Mike Kudrowski and these, these big-time stars. No, inside oh. Ponca City. When you went when, when, at Ponca, so we had no social media, so you got motocross action, dirt bike, and you would open up the magazine and about August or September, and you would see next year's bike. Well, the next year's bike was always displayed at Ponca under each factory team's oh, tent right. that he's yeah, talking about. Yeah, I do about. remember Remember, that. The, remember <laughs> the Kawasaki Prips drink? The, the, no, I don't. They had the thumbs up. The, you know, they always had the Kawasaki thumbs it up. It was a drink? Yeah, it's called Prips. And no. it was just in igloo coolers, and it was the first energy drink that they would offer. Dude. Yeah. That's awesome. I don't remember that. Okay, okay, okay. We're going to get off in memory land. I'm so sorry. Uh, let's, <laughs> let's, let's move on. Why number, okay, when I see you at the racetrack, why number 63? Was that a baseball number? Yep. Pittsburgh Pirates. That hat he's got on there that was go. my number with Pittsburgh. How'd you know? Garrett That's Gensler in the <laughs> audience wearing a Pittsburgh Pirates hat. That's yeah. awesome. That was your number at Pittsburgh. Yeah, you know, I don't know how many people reminisce about the one year of their life that I guess maybe what you would consider yourself successful, you doing what you do. Okay. But that was a year. 
Okay, so that was that was going to be one of my baseball questions later on. So that was your your most successful team, Pittsburgh yes, Pirates. Yes, and statistically, just statistically too. Yeah, okay, all together. Okay, uh, championships. Let's talk about these over thirty, over forty championships. <laughs> this guy is an Oklahoma State champion in motocross. So I know it's bizarre. I know it's crazy that he's a major league baseball player. It's not good enough that he now he has to go freaking win motocross titles. It's irritating. So tell us about it. Well, so we skipped all those years, and then I guess probably I was like 38, and my son wanted to start racing dirt bikes. So we got him in 80 or 85, and he started racing some. And then I guess about a year later, I started riding with Luke, and uh, it just kind of led to that. And then, you know, when I was 38, I started doing the state series with him, and then, you know, just progressed through there. And Did you win the over 30 and over, and over 40 in, in uh, well, no, you were 38. Okay, I so was 39. I think over. it was like the second year I finally got, you know, got the most points for the season, you know. You know how that is with the yeah. state series stuff, you know. You know, Whisper and Smith shows up two races and wins and then doesn't show up for the next five. Right. But, you right. know, it's, yeah. a, it's a marathon, not a, not a you know. Sure, uh, sure. Not a, not sure. a sprint. But, uh, yeah, did that, and then. Uh, and when I was 42, then that's when he was training with Trampus Parker. Okay. I yeah. would go down there and train, and that's where I first met him. Gotcha. Yeah. And it'll fill the dreams. Yeah. I remember the dreams. Yeah. yeah. A lot had, of fun. Yeah. I don't know tires, why it was so spooky to me. I, I mean, I, I don't have a very good memory, I think, at times. And it's like I remember that place, but when I remember that place, it was like eerie yeah, it's to me. Definitely a different track. I mean, Trampus, had, all he had was a. Well, track. no, it wasn't Trampus back oh, then. Really? It was a husband and wife. Oh, this is before I think I Trampus. Remember, yeah. And and it was like so far out there. Am I am I describing this right? Right. No, it's, yeah, out, it's out, and out, and then right. it goes down that big ravine. And you have to come back up. Yeah, and, like half and then the... I I felt like I was going out to Jason Voorhees' <laughs> lake ranch or something. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, Friday whatever. the 13th. Here we, here we go. Here we go. <laughs> I didn't even know I was going to tie that in. There you go. That's so, good. I mean, I felt eerie out there. Like, this is creepy. Yeah. I don't feel good here. So, you guys met there? Yeah, yeah. I thought he meant the way, like, Tramps is track conditions. Oh, we, we, yeah. We were running European GP. Yeah. Now, I, mean, now, now, yeah. I, I do want to yeah. yeah. say this was before Trampus had it. Yeah. So, yeah. I don't want to say anything negative about Travis Parker's track. It was before <laughs> Travis. All right, let's 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 move on because uh, we're going to go into this privateer profile here in a minute. Uh, girls class, my daughter's raced. I see every post you put on social media. I mean, it has something to do with Jazzy and her racing, which makes you like Moto Dad of the Year. I mean, I, I, I respect that. That's awesome. What's uh, So when I say girls class... Um, what's going on with that? Do you, do you see the rise in that? Uh, yeah, I mean, we do. I mean, she started when she was three or four. I got her a bike, and by the time she was eight, she got to do, like, the KTM Junior Challenge, you know, in Atlanta. We really? Were, I didn't yeah, know that. Yeah, she that's, raced. That's that was pretty cool. cool. Yeah, it was yeah, cool. We had a blast fly out there. You're like a factory rider, you know, and we get out there, and the first thing my wife tells me is she says, this is for her, not you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Think yeah again. All the 50 Think again. They gave me a KTM shirt. They yeah. Get yeah. Gear, yeah. They get neck braces. You know, the bikes are all ready to go, you know, numbered with their names on the bike stand. Oh, my God. It was so cool. That is and cool. then she races in front of like 60,000 people, you know, and it's so cool. And we're on the track, and they've had the GoPro on them. And, and, uh, everyone got a GoPro on everyone, them? And they got to keep right. the GoPro. <laughs> Yeah. You got to keep the GoPro? Yeah, yeah. So, we needed to get into this. Yeah, man. we tried, but, like, <laughs> you kept hitting it. Jackson kept hitting it at a different year, like, uh, or no. Oh, yeah, my bir- no, my birthday was bad for, remember? I couldn't I get in there. I don't remember now. What? Exactly. I don't know. I couldn't qualify. We try- they only take so <laughs> many, and then you don't mi- you miss Dallas because they only took so many. You try to get St. Louis, and yeah. then we miss that. I don't know what the deal was. Can but- you do, like, all of them, or can you only do one? Uh, they, they just select you for one, oh, and, and they're not even really cool. regional. Yeah. Also. You know, it's just they put your name in, and if they yeah. fill the first ones at Anaheim, you know, A1, A2, all that stuff, then, you know. And heck you now just, with you know, futures, you, yeah. Supercross futures, then, you could hit everyone. Then I everyone. think the winners of all the races then show up at the final, you know. Okay, okay. Do, so. I'm sorry to rush you. We've got 
to keep on this time schedule because everybody's going to go to the drillers game after this. So we're going to zip right into our privateer profile and we're going to get back to Clint here in a little bit. Our privateer profile tonight is Caden Amarine. And uh, guys, this, is, like I was saying earlier, I've only spoke to this kid a few times, but I've seen him ride since he was on 85s ripping it up i mean i don't want to be the creepy dad that always comes up to him <laughs> no, you man you're so awesome yeah. but he is so awesome and we've seen him race at monster cup and loretta lens and and let me just go through this real quick he's raced monster cup loretta's he's been part of the dirty 100 probably numerous times the dirty 100 they they list the fastest 100 kids in the nation he's been a part of that let's jump right into this guys if you would give caden amarine a round of applause <laughs> Welcome to the show, brother. Thank thanks, you. Thanks for having me. Thanks Good for coming out. Yeah. I called your girlfriend, yeah. and I was like, hey, man, can he, you think he's available? Because I didn't even have your number. Yeah. So thank you. Yeah, thanks for having me. It's good so, to be here. So Loretta's last week? Yeah. How'd Loretta's, it go? It was good. Um, had some really good finishes. I got a third and a fourth in moto, both Moto2s and uh, finished off the week with a sixth and a seventh. So not bad. Uh, Competition was tough out there. Sixth like, and seventh was overall. Yeah, that was so my So it's a three moto format. Yeah. You explain to these guys. It, it, it's uh, how does it go down? Yeah. So I, you only get to at Loretta's. You only get to race two classes. You can qualify or try in multiple classes, but you only get to race two there. And um, yeah, it's a three moto format, and so you kind of have your motos timed out throughout the whole week. And um, and what classes did you ride? Uh, I rode the 250 Pro Sport and the 450 Pro Sport. On and a 250, or did you switch? Which to a is the fastest yeah, class at Loretta's. It's it's the level before you go pro pro for you guys that don't know. It's the level you know before you go to Saturday Night Supercross. Okay, so yeah. he's at that top level. Yeah, I rode my 250 both classes because yeah, we, we were gonna ride the 450, but we were thinking it's tighter track and. Um, ride my 250 better on the tighter so track. So did you even get off the line good on the 250 in the 450 class? Uh, the the first mode of the 450, I got a fourth in, and I actually got a really good, one of my best starts of the week, and uh, oh. yeah, I, well actually I thought it was good, but I think it was like 10th or so, but against 450s it was good, and I had like, I think a 450 right beside me, so like, I was able to get the jump on him, thankfully, and not get shot down by him. But yeah, it was definitely tough getting the start on them. With awesome. That power. I can't believe it. I mean, I, I, I don't know if I would have rode the 250 and the 450. I don't know. I mean, also hanging on to the 450 yeah. too. Like, Only because the start one. is what fourth gear. Yeah, that. I think if I would have rode my four, that's what we were just trying to decide. We were like, man, do you ride the 450 just get a good start? Because getting a good start at Loretta's is huge. And so if you can get a good start at Loretta's and maybe get a whole shot, then it's easy to, or it's easier to stay up there rather than coming so, to the pack. So make no mistake about it, okay? Too. A lot of us are going to drive vans or box vans, motor homes. When you show up to Loretta's, your bike's under the semi, right? I mean, there's a huge EBR semi, Yamaha sponsored. You're, uh, you're legit. This is it. These are one of our top racers at the ranch. You had a 450 under there? No, not there. So you had a 250 under yeah, there. They knew you were going to ride 250 in yeah. both. Okay. That's pretty amazing. I mean, how do you, how do yeah. you impress and get a ride like that? Uh, right now, I was very fortunate to have them. It makes life a lot easier at the races just kind of they kind of get the bikes ready and get get them there for you so i mean that's intimidating you it, guys know this that's intimidating to, to pull up in a pickup truck or a van and you got a guy like this under the semi tent well, you've already confident you've already whenever been you're beat in your tent. yeah exactly you <laughs> already been beat in your mind yeah. you know i mean yeah, sure. do, and do you realize that going up to the line yeah i mean i think i still like i still kind of get and there's like going up against the people who are even higher on teams, like higher than mine. But um, who's higher than you at EBR? <laughs> well, just kind of like Kitchen and like Hymas, all like the Monster Energy guys and yeah. the young. Yamaha guys. Yeah, but, but I mean EBR yeah, is just yeah. as close. I mean yeah, I watched you know, EBR chasing for 
20 minutes plus two or whatever that when you got third mm -hmm. it was awesome i sat right there next to his dad and watched him it was cool you and jazzy yeah. went down yeah and wide, yeah and how many days did you stay we were there three days oh my god yeah. uh there to basically watch the the cheer on the girls oh, yeah. class and then watch and, the, yeah watch yeah, the other awesome yeah you know what i hate to uh mentioned the girl we're talking about Caden here but the girls class was one of the best races of the yeah. week mm -hmm. yeah. Jackson went down and cheered on Kinsey Bricado yeah. and and tried helping out in that camp for a while and she actually turned the fastest lap time of the girls and didn't even win the girls class yeah she came through the pack um came from like I think she started at like 10th and then like it was the last girls moto and they just announced, holy shit, <laughs> Kenzie Bricado just ran the fastest girls, I think they said, of the week. He's 16, guys. I can't control everything that comes out of his mouth. I'm sorry. I can't. Man. He's sitting across the table. I can't slap him or anything. I grounded. <laughs> I grounded. No, it was. We're good. Right, let's get back to Kate. I'm so sorry. Uh, when did you start riding, buddy? Uh, my parents got me a little P-Dub 50 whenever I was uh, three and I rode that for about a year, and then they got me a uh, KTM Junior 50, and then I went to my first race when I was four. Okay. So kind of been racing since then. You were probably riding a dirt bike before a bicycle. Yeah, I, I was. think. Well, That's how Jackson I, was. Yeah, I had to. I think my parents told me before they got a bike, because I was wanting a bike. Um, they, was like, they told me I had to ride my bicycle without it, training wheels before they got me a bike. Gotcha. And so they got me a P-Dub, and they had the training wheels for it and stuff, and they, like, were telling me they were going to put them on. I was like, no, I already cut this. So you never even rode training wheels? No. They told me to get it on the bicycles. <laughs> I was Heck already yeah. good. Awesome. But that's kind of how I remember. I didn't, yeah. I didn't start like that, but I came to you, and, or I don't know, I don't remember, but you said that I came to you and just was like, hey, take them off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Jackson rode training wheels for mm -hmm. a couple of days, and then, you know, they're a pain to put on and, yeah. and take off. So he comes to us one day, and he's like, I don't know, he's two and a half. I, I swear to God, he's two and a half riding with training wheels. And um, he says, take these things off. I don't know if he said every word because he's two and a half. Yeah. But anyway, uh, Gibberish. I said, if I take these off, we're not putting them back on. Mm -hmm. And so he figured it out. So you're a 50. So you, you started at three and you're, so you're not one of the guys that are overnight. I started on eighties. You've been riding forever. Yeah. I've, I've been at it since I was little. Dude. And are your parents are on their way to Tulsa right now? Yeah. They're on the way. Right what now. are they coming down for this weekend? I uh, just kind of hang out at the lake, kind of okay. relax. So you live in Tulsa full-time now pretty much? Yeah. Um, my parents, whenever I was training at Trampuses, I was down here obviously a lot during the week. And so they would come down a weekend sometimes, and we hung out at their house. Or, like, we started going to Keystone, and so my, and my parents really liked that lake. And so a few years ago, they bought a house down there, but then they ended That's up awesome. selling it. And... Then a friend of theirs was selling their house there on the lake again. And so it was the right deal and kind of right timing yep. for everything. My parents ended up buying another house. And it's only about 50 so minutes to Robbie's, right? So it's not terrible. So that's kind of, I'm very fortunate to have them and let me live there while I'm down here training. That's um, awesome. I did not know that. But so yeah, you're living at the Keystone Lake yeah, House. Yeah. And you're driving oh, to Robbie's. Yeah. Oh, that's where you're staying? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. They need some jet skis. I, I know a guy right sitting right behind you, old John. John he's Snyder, got he's got skis. some jet skis. You need it. You need yeah, I definitely up. need to. That's awesome. So you're training at Robbie's pretty much every day? Yep, I'm pretty much there every I saw day of the week. Robbie post a, a picture yesterday. <laughs> I'm such a Raynard fan. I screenshotted the picture just because I couldn't zoom in enough. To, mm -hmm. I, I, <laughs> this sounds totally fanboy. <laughs> I, I screenshotted the picture just so I could zoom in to see how freaking big Robbie is yeah. now. He's <laughs> like a V. Yeah. Has he been like in the gym 24-7? I, I don't mean, know. you he, guys I, are sitting on the line. He, still he, looks the like, or is he... he looks like the dad and you guys are the little kids. Oh, yeah, he, he is. Definitely. You and Fortin <laughs> are yeah. sitting on the line. You know he posted that? Yeah, I saw it. Yeah, he, uh, it's crazy whenever he gets out because he can still throw it down. I told Jackson last night, 
when we saw that pitcher, I said, I'll bet you he can rail these guys for two two laps. I said, yeah. two laps. Can he? Yeah, it's like one to two. One? Okay. Two on a, two okay. on a good day. I That's think. what I we said. I said, bucks I, on it. well, I said one maybe. I was yeah, like, man, that, I don't that know. That day, uh, the dude is still amazing. Yeah, that day uh, we that picture was taken, we did uh, kind of half the track, and it was just us three riding that day, and he uh, – did split lanes for half the track so me and Austin race and you have to stay on your side of the track the whole way and he was one of the lanes was really fast and like had some big berms in it and so it was faster than the other one and like later on we were working sections and he was like did you notice how one lane was faster he was like yeah I did that on purpose to try to because I was thinking like man I could probably make this one work for me whenever <laughs> I race one of you guys he's so amazing he, yeah man. We're going to take a break real quick to, to go to the softball girls. Let me, let me introduce these girls to you, to you guys uh, because I know they've got to get to the game. They're doing something special. We're going to come back to both of you guys, and I think we're just going to run long because this is awesome. So uh, right now I want to, we're going to play a game. This is segment five, and it's called the Dizzy Dollar. You girls ready? Listen, this is who I've got here tonight. This is the 12 and under Tulsa shootout girls softball team okay these girls just won the USSSA I knew I, I was trying to get that right Jason you hear that uh, earlier today he was like the USSSA and he goes you can simplify it by saying USSSA it these girls are the USSSA World Series champions <laughs> awesome <laughs> hell yeah they just won they just won the 10 and under World Series in Vera, Florida, and now we're going to raise some money for them tonight, right now. You girls are going to play a game. We're going to raise some money for you. They're about to start their fall series in the 12 and under. Tana, come on up. All right. You girls are going to play a game called the Dizzy Dollar. I'm going to stay here on the mic. Tana's going to hold up a board. Listen, it's got a – we need a T-shirt grab a t-shirt we're going to cover there we're going to cover your your eyes with a t-shirt you're going to spin around three times with your forehead on the bat they've all got headbands on just slide on them down right now yeah okay well whoever's first just slide it, the t-shirt over her head or tie it whatever you want to. <laughs> whatever you want to do okay so we're going to raise some money for these girls right now. We've got a board over here for you, for anyone listening and not watching this. We've got a board over here with dollar bills on it. It's got tens, fifteens. Uh, Don't you wish there's a fifteen? It's got fives, tens, twenties, uh, $100 bills on it. We're going to spin these girls around three times with your forehead on that bat. Who's going first? Her number, her jersey number is 23. We're going to add those together, and we're going to do five spins. Go ahead and get over here in front of the Moto Moto Live show. Uh, the sign right here. She can't see. Oh, she can't see. She's blindfolded. Hang on, Tana. I'm sorry. you got to unblindfold her real quick and show her the money. Show her the board. Hang on. I'm sorry. We're new to this. This is our first Dizzy Bad experience. What's your name, girl? London, that's an awesome name. London, look at this board with money on it. Money, London, raise your raise your blindfold. Raise your blindfold, London, and look at this money. You're gonna spin three times and then come up with your blindfold and you try to grab that biggest bill. Do you see the biggest bill? Are you locked in? You see the one hundred. One, two spins, three spins, four spins, five spins. Come up and grab that hundred, girl. She ain't even did. Where's that hundred dollar bill at? She knows. Oh, she knew it. What'd she get? She got the hundred dollars. 
All right, all right, all right. Awesome. Hey, this is this is all for a good cause. These girls are raising money to go on the road. They stay in hotels. They've got fuel bills. They've got expenses. We're raising money for these girls. Who's next? What's your name and who's next? Kaylee. Her number on her jersey is 25. We're going to add that up. She's got to spend seven times. You see the money? She's, up, she's lifting up her blindfold. She sees the 20s, the 1s, the 10s, the 100. Do you see that 100? Spend seven times and come up and try to get that $100 bill. Four, five, six spins, seven spins. I hope you're dizzy. Try to find that hundred. Oh, this is so bad. These girls, go I think, broke. are cheating. I think they need to do the jersey number spins. Okay. Yeah, okay. they need the jersey okay. number spins. Number one, let me just say, both of you, we're not going to make you do it again, but you're supposed to have that bat on the ground. Have the bat touching the ground. What's your name? Really Come up here, Lily, and tell us about... Tell us about, tell us your name, the name of your team, and tell us about what you girls do. Go ahead, speak into that. My name is Lily Blaylock, and our um, team name is Tulsa Shootout. And then we play travel ball, 12 and under. And we went to Florida, like you said earlier, to the World Series, and we went undefeated in the World Series. Didn't you win like 20 games straight? Or something? Something like that, yeah. <laughs> so you're oh pretty gosh. awesome. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Tell them how awesome 79. you are. What'd she say? 79. 79. 79. Get, yeah. Lost 23, and then, yeah. Wow. All right. Well, thank you. <laughs> awesome for being awesome. Thank you for being awesome. <laughs> you girls rock. I play, well, my main place is catcher. But I play outfield also. Good job. Don't we have a bucket too if anybody wants to donate to um. their team? Well, if you do <laughs> want to donate to their team, bring it up and throw it on the table and we'll make sure that they get it. All right, you ready to spin? Mm -hmm. Seven times. What's your number? Seven? Her number is seven. She's going to spin seven times. Keep that bat on the ground, girl. Come on now. Don't cheat. You got to be dizzy. One, two spins, three spins, four spins, five spins. Six spins, seven spins. Come on, find that hundred. Is there a hundred left up there? <laughs> <laughs> oh my God! She grabbed, she grabbed, she grabbed twenty bucks, but uh, Tana cheated and gave her sixty. Okay. Okay. So hey, how much money do we have up there total? Who can who can count this money for me? She raised her hand. What's your name, girl? Kaylee. Kaylee, come up here. Tell me, tell me what position you play. I play third, and I'm a pitcher. You're a pitcher. Clint's a pitcher. You've been listening to the show. Yeah. He's pretty awesome. Okay, you got a bunch of pointers. Um. Yes. Kind of. Okay. Awesome. Well, hey, this 12 and under, this 12 and under team fall series you're about to start, go kick some butt. All right. Somebody count this money. Count all of it. And we're going to see if we can make a deal here. Count all of it. You didn't, you, didn't, you didn't get all of it, but I want you to count all of it. Sure. 200. You gave her sticky money. 370, 371. $371 is what we raised for these girls tonight. We're going to give them all of it. Who gets the money? This is because of our sponsors, Beehive Blends, Roost, 
Grab Brewsti Roost MX, the Mayo Hotel, and Bub's Creek. Thank you so much for our sponsors. Here you go. I I'm going to hand this to you. I'm gonna, you're going to go give that to your coach or your mom or something. And good luck in the 12 and under fall series. Thank you, girls. All right. Awesome. Give her a hand. Awesome. Okay. We've got one more game that I want to play before we get back to just chatting with these guys, and I do this with our privateer profile. All right. I told Caden that we're going to play a game, and we, we've done this with our privateers in the past, and I want to continue this because these guys are out there on the road paying for training, uh, training, uh, uh, compounds and hotels and gas and you name it and and uh, the Moto Moto Live Show wants to give back to the privateers. So, like I, like I said earlier, Clint's been there, done that. Truly got the T-shirt with Moto and Major League Baseball. I, this this other guy, Caden, is on his way, and we're gonna help him out tonight. We're gonna play left pocket, right pocket. I don't know if you saw Chandler play this. Okay. I don't know how much is in my left pocket or my right pocket. All right? I don't. I'm, gonna, I'm just, just telling you this up front. I don't normally walk around with cash. I pay credit card for everything. I'm going to give you the opportunity tonight to pick whatever is in my left pocket you can have beside my car keys. Or whatever's in my right pocket, which one you want to take? This is for the privateer mm. profile fund. <laughs> John Snyder <laughs> said left. left he right. said He's left. Hey, I right. write, I write left-handed, but I do everything else right-handed. John says See, I left. Like I think left is, is, is where he's on the right. He is the owner of this hotel. Okay, uh, I don't know. I don't know. He's I'm the not He's the money man, money man, John. Well, I may go. What are you going with? I may fall and go with left. You're going left. I may okay. have to. Okay, we're going to go left. I'm going to stand up, and I'm going to find out what's in my <laughs> left pocket. All right. Now, this, guys, this is for a good cause, okay? Oh, dang. That's some money. Okay. <laughs> All right, in my left pocket. Now, pay attention. This is a game. That gum. I got 20, 40. 60, 160. I gave you a good one. <laughs> Dad gum, you. 5, 6, 7, 168, $169. $169. Now, I'm going to tell you, you want to take this or do you want to risk it all for what's in the right pocket? Risk it there could be a piece of lint in the right pocket. <laughs> there could be. Five bucks, that could be 700. I feel like you don't keep money in two what did pockets, I say? right? 169? Is that, is that probably, what I said? Uh, mm -hmm. well, 169 or take the risk. This is kind of like make a deal. I like that game, actually. <laughs> I don't know. 169. So the car's out of it? The ca I don't, actually, I don't, actually, actually, I don't even have my keys, and it's the cargo van. <laughs> Uh, moto van. Moto van. There you Man. go. Even 169 better. is yours, or you can risk what's in the right pocket. I just have. <laughs> oh, he just got a good point. Ah. Uh, he's right. I don't know, John. He's right. John Snyder. He's gonna get him broke. <laughs> John Snyder is over here on the sidelines if you're listening to this, and he's it. trying to give Caden some advice. And, uh, you know, this guy, I'm going to say, he's real credible, <laughs> okay? He's <laughs> got credit, risky. okay? He was right the first he, time. He, John's the owner of this Mayo Hotel, and uh, he has the Moto Mayo Museum, which, mm -hmm. dude, we need to take you to yeah, that. Yeah, for sure. Both of you yeah. need to see this museum. I think there's about... 7,000 motorcycles in there. No, there's probably like three or 400. But it, when you walk in this, uh, uh, the, the Mayo Museum, it's amazing. 
Uh, anyway, we'll, we'll, we'll get on that. You guys got to go back and, and look at our archives and watch that show we did with John. 169, or what's in my rod pocket? What's right saying? pocket. I, I think you should discuss it more. Just kind of like Just discuss it off. more. Yeah, I'm out. <laughs> oh, the, yeah, girl, see, the girls went to the game. Yeah, they're doing something with the girl, the softball girls at the game. We're running a little bit over. You got to yeah. hurry up, make a decision. Yeah, I may just take it. You're taking it. Know. Okay, I'm going to show you what you missed out on. There's 169. <laughs> okay. The 500. You're guessing 500. All right. Gotta give it to it's it's for a good cause, man. Okay. Oh, there's some more. I've got a room key. You're not getting that. I've got my license. You're not getting that. Uh, I see a dollar. I see a one. I see one. <laughs> I see a one, two, one hundred. Oh. Wow. So we're at a hundred and two. I see twenty. We're hundred and twenty-two. Hundred and twenty-three dollars. Oh, that was close. You made the right choice. That wouldn't have been bad. So anyway. this guy, <laughs> this guy's a gambler. Jackson, should we give all of it to him? No, I'll give it. Let me see that. I gotta pay for the entry fee next weekend. Jackson, yeah, I give it to him. We're gonna give it all to you, brother, because we believe in your cause and we want to cheer you on. There you go. Well, I appreciate it a lot. That's our privateer profile for the night, Caden Amarine. You guys gotta tune in and watch some races. I don't know if you can rewind Loretta Lynn's. The kid was top three at Loretta Lynn's, one of the, the, the biggest amateur nationals in the world. One more question before we go with, with your segment. When are we going to see you in the pro ranks, Supercross, Anaheim 1? What's the deal? So my plan right now is uh, I'm headed to Bud's Creek next weekend, and I'm going to finish out the outdoor season, and then... He didn't say Bub's Creek. <laughs> You said Bubs, I wish you did. Bubs. Bud's yeah. Creek in Maryland. They yeah, and then, uh, <laughs> then I'm going to be doing Supercross in 22. So this next year I'm going to be doing the next. Anaheim what? Uh, West Coast, East Coast? I, we haven't decided yet. We're kind of just waiting to see how it So we is. will see you in a Supercross in 2022. Yeah, that's correct. Do you know your three-digit number yet? Uh, 432. 432. Right, that's yeah. cool. Guys, Come January 1st, be watching for the first Supercross race. I don't know what coast he's going to run yet. He doesn't know. Watch for Caden Amarine on number 432. I know we're going to be cheering you on from the couch. It's going to be awesome. We love Supercross. We're going to be watching you. Thank you so much Thank you. for coming out and doing the privateer profile with us. I've got a few more things uh, that we're going to ask both of you, and then we're going to go because we're all going to go to the uh, Drillers game, which has it started? Did the rain stop? There's a rain delay. There's a rain delay. Oh, okay. perfect. Awesome. So both of you get to go home with the Beehive Blends. Please let me know what you think. Um, uh, if you like it, please share it, like, Facebook, Instagram, all that. And uh, it's, it, it, I really do. I, I love it. Uh, check out Roost and Max. Don't forget our sponsors. Don't forget the ones who, who help us out. The last segment, segment number six, I'd like to thank. You go first, Clint. You've been through the ringer. You've been from the bottom to the top of MLB. I'm sure your parents got you somewhere. Um, wh who do you want to thank in moto, baseball, whatever? Uh, Give us some last thoughts. Of course, all my family. Uh, probably what comes to, to mind was my grandpa. Uh, he helped me a lot, too. Really? Yeah, he did. So, okay. Yeah, he was a good man. And uh, he sent me to a baseball camp. I think I was just 15 or 16 to OSU baseball camps. Kind of what triggered the whole baseball thing. So, yeah. That's so awesome. Uh, I just became Grandpa Jack. And uh, my daughter uh, had, a, had a son, and his name is Cash. And it's so fun. It's a new way of looking at life. Uh, I feel like I'm actually experiencing that more than I did Kylie and Jackson almost. Mm -hmm. So I get the grandpa thing. Are you, You're not a grandpa yet. Yeah. You are? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Come on, let's hear it. Spoil them and then send them home. <laughs> I'm loving it. Kylie, Dakota, Cash, they're out there listening, I hope. 
someday. Maybe they'll listen to this ten years from now. And well, I'm could have put some all on the podcast. I'm thing, loving so it. To it. It's so fun. And I didn't feel like a grandpa. I don't. I'm 46. I don't feel like a grandpa, but I'm so loving it. Yeah, it's, it's awesome. So okay, so grandpa, grandpa what? Papa. Papa. Mm-hmm. Okay. That's so awesome. I love to hear family togetherness and and that they support you. Okay, so that was baseball. What about moto? Who took you to the track? Who got you to win the third to, to eventually win the over thirty, over forty Oklahoma I'd State? I'd like to thank my wife, uh, all the motocross stuff for putting up with all of the injuries. Being hurt a lot. Uh, you know, it's financially it's it's difficult. And uh, will you make another run at the uh, the Oklahoma State championship title? Yeah, I think about doing the plus fifty next year. Uh, I had pretty major back surgery uh, almost three years ago. I had some artificial discs put in my lower back, and uh, they're healed now. So wow. And you know how it is. You can if only you'll wait four years, I'll be fifty, and you'll be fifty-four. We can make a run at the over fifty class. There you go. We'll welcome you. <laughs> oh, it's a challenge. I hear we'll, it. We'll let you kids show up. You know what? Real quick, before we before we go on, I forgot about this uh, until just now. We're talking about over 40, over 50. Uh, uh, John Snyder has welcomed me as part of the Moto Mayo team. We're going to ride a vintage race together. Or actually, he's on a different team. He put himself on a the the winning team with Trampus Parker. Oh yeah, that's and he, yeah, that's he put me, but he wants to. He keeps telling me my two teammates are like champions and this or that. But but then again, I'm not on his team. So, uh, just yeah. So you'll provide the vintage bike. Awesome. I've got John Snyder. First week. One second. Yeah. I I try. <laughs> He's I like think, on the spot. I He's got to look at his race schedule. Yeah, I don't really know. Yeah, Clint, I, I was going to do it last year, but Jasmine was racing, so we're going to try to do okay. it this year for sure. Yeah. Okay. All right. So so people listening on the radio or podcast uh, a year from now, whatever. John Snyder is off to the side of the track, or the the track, track. the side of the, the, the hotel track. here, and he's screaming over here, telling us to race this November fifth through seventh, twenty twenty one. It's at Nichols Park in Henrietta, Oklahoma. It's the Arma Vintage National Finals, and am I correct in saying that Trampus Parker puts this on? He puts it on. It's a, it's a national. It's a national championship with vintage bikes. And we're racing it, brother. We've got a freaking Mayo Hotel Moto team. We've got custom gear. I c- wait till I sh- of it. brag about this online. Wait till you see this gear. He's even putting Jumping Jack on the back of my pants, brother. Huh? Oh, yeah, I will. I will. I will. Uh, Why are they I'll, putting Jumping Jack on I'll show on you a picture. Yeah, hell You don't yeah. do that anymore. I couldn't pass it up. I thought I wouldn't race again, and then John sends me a picture of the custom gear and says, I need your name and number. I said, Tana, uh, I can't pass this up. <laughs> I, and a nickname, yeah. He says, nickname, uh, last name and number that you want on your stuff. This is custom stuff. I'm yeah, going to show you what, guys. What happened to you telling me in the hospital, oh, dude, I'm never going to ride dude, again. I my, quit. I broke my Sell femur. bikes. That was my 30th broken bone. Yeah, you should be done. <laughs> and, I, and I thought I was done. But when John Snyder calls you and says, we're racing the vintage national, you just suck it up. And you, well, you call your wife first. Well, you, you take your wife, <laughs> you wa- you take your wife you to a good dinner. <laughs> oh, you, you did take her to dinner that I night, took her to you? dinner and I said, and hey. I said, I don't know. I've been meaning to talk to you about this for a while. <laughs> <laughs> and I broke the news, and, and, and i got to be honest, she didn't say yes or no. She just didn't say anything. So, huh. John, we're racing. <laughs> we're racing. Okay, all right, that's that race. Let's move on. we got to end this show because everybody's going to the Drillers game. Drillers baseball, we got 20-something tickets up here. I'm sorry, got rain delay. Gotcha. I asked you if you're going to make another OSCS title. Uh, have you... 
in your MLB career have you ever been starstruck? I mean, you've got players like, well, we mentioned them early, earlier, Bobby Bonds, Mark McGuire, probably Sammy Sosa. I mean, you're playing with some guys that are in the Hall of Fame. Have you ever been starstruck? Explain more what you mean. Uh, starstruck, like when you showed up to the game, you're like, oh, my God, it's Mark McGuire. No, never really did. Uh, wow. Just because I really didn't follow the sport that much, so, you know, if Bob Hanna was there. Dude, I hear this all the time. The guys that are ultra successful. Don't think it's that. They amazing. like don't watch Moto. He's he's playing MLB. Or they don't think it's I that don't amazing. watch baseball. I don't follow it. But he's this amazing MLB pitcher and he doesn't even he's he just walks around and does a job and he doesn't even follow it. I'll bet you if I ask Caden, he doesn't do you watch Moto Supercross or do you just go out and you just do it? I usually watch Supercross a lot. These I kind of like motocross is like during the day, so like I kind of like sometimes forget about it, and then I'm, yeah, I'm scrolling I'm through. I scrolling through Instagram, and I see everyone. I see the posts, and I see who won, and I see most of the highlights. So I'm like, then I forget to watch it because I already know what happened. Keep doing what you're doing. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever you're doing is working, and there's something to it to be in the humble, quiet. Uh, what did I say earlier? The silent, silent assassin. assassin. <laughs> We're putting. Let's figure out Sam Walker. Let's figure out how to put that on the back of his pants. The silent assassin. Yeah. Okay, yeah, you've got a good team behind you. Thanks for coming out and hanging our sign, by the way. Yeah. Caden and Sam Walker and Rick Walker came out with H and R lifting and hung our Bubs Creek sign at uh, the racetrack. Thanks for doing that. This kid works hard during the week to go make it look easy on the weekends guys we're going to wrap this up thank you for coming out to episode 11 with clint sadowski and caden amarine let's give them a big round of applause thank you guys this will be dropped to spotify and apple and youtube in the next few days i really appreciate it thanks jack for thank you. yeah thanks so for having much. us thank you jackson all right we're out